Hi and welcome to the third instalment of converting the Bruder Sprinter to full hobby grade radio control. In this part here we're going to be figuring out the conundrum of the steering. Now the model doesn't come with any steering which means that there is some more figuring out to do than there has been on the last couple of conversions which I've done. One of the big challenges here is that these tiles are quite fat and the distance between the tars and the body is quite narrow. Now as the wheels come they've got quite a wide offset which would mean that if you were to steer pivoting from this point here the wheels when they turn would definitely foul the body both at the front and the back. So one of the things that needs to be done is to find a way to reduce that offset and to get a steering knuckle as far inside the tar as possible. I am very keen to try and keep the truck looking as much as possible like the original toy so I've ruled out changing these tars for easier ones to fit. I have already experimented with one of the spare t wheels off the Jeep and these wheels are exactly the same as those on the Sprinter and I managed to reduce the offset as much as I think is possible. I'll be coming on to this in a minute to show how I did that. The first thing to do so that we can see what's what is to remove the wheels and axles. I'm leaving as much plastic on as possible for as long as possible because that helps me get things to line up where I want them to go because if I can get the wheels to basically travel in the same place as they are on the original model I know things are most likely to line up. The other thing which I'm really hoping to do is to be able to introduce some level of suspension in the front ideally the same amount as the travel is at the moment because I think that together with the suspension at the back will make the model move much better. I'm planning as far as possible to use the Jeep which came on the back of the Sprinter as a donor for the steering. So this is trying to contain the extra parts that a person might need to fabricate or buy to the bare minimum. So I'm going to start this bit of the conversion by removing the front suspension from the Jeep. What you need to do first, there are a couple of little black plastic tabs which I've actually already removed and they just slice off very easily with a Stanley knife. In order to then remove the suspension, there's a couple of tabs and you can literally just push them in and it all pretty well just comes apart. These parts here I'm going to keep because I think that these might be useful in the front of the Sprinter for remounting these steering knuckles when I use them. I cannot imagine that I'm ever going to want to use these very hard plastic tiles for anything. I am keen to use the axle which it comes with on the other model so I'm going to chop away this wheel so that I actually get it off without damaging either the steering knuckle here or that pin. A little bit time consuming but not terribly difficult to do. And here we have a steering arm. And while we're doing this, because the diameter of this shaft here is about 3mm and we know that the inside of the sprinter wheel is 4mm, I'm going to use another piece of this aluminium 
4mm tube, which I've used previously in order to sleeve this and make it slightly bigger. This tube is quite a nice tight push fit over the axle. I think that I'd better remove these axles and show how I did these wheels. Keeping as much plastic on as possible, I'm just going to use the Dremel with a carbon blade to cut through the plastic and through the axle, but I'm going to leave the plastic in place. I know that I'll be carving some of this later, but I don't know how much I want to remove, so I'm going to leave that until I reach that stage. Right, so that's these removed, and I particularly wanted to keep these pieces of plastic in place because it's going to show me where I want the wheels to go. Next stage is just to remove the axles as I did for the rear. 6mm nut screwed on. Now for the trimming I'm trying to achieve the same as I did on this spare jeep wheel and you start like this and really the most important thing with this stage is to make sure that you don't cut your fingers. It's quite handy that the tiles are fairly flexible and all of this stage is done using a Stanley knife. So start by with your fingers out of the way and not cutting the tar, slice to the centre on each of these five, like so. So I've I've sliced each of them to this central shaft. Take off. 6mm, the M6 nut, and then again it's it's a good idea to push the tiles out of the way because they because they recover quite quickly. Slice parallel down the side. To meet the horizontal cuts which you've just done. Again I can't emphasize how strongly you need to be really careful to think about where your fingers and where the tar is relative to the knife blade because I can imagine it will be very easy to cut yourself. Now what you need to do is you need to make room for that nut to get all the way that nut to get all the way up so that it's flush with these parts here. So that means carving out a little bit more and you'll uh, notice that there are slightly raised bits on some of these and you need to cut roughly in line with those and do the same on each of the five. And then lastly, getting these bits out which are in the gap. They will roughly twist out with a pair of pliers. So that's those, and then just going around with a knife to catch any bits. That all seems about right. And then 
I'm going to, before I put it on, I'm going to drill the M6 bolts, so 2.5mm holes either side, and then tap out with an M3 tap. Again, I've done this in the last couple of videos, so I won't show you the whole of this stage. And then having drilled the 2.5mm drill bit and the M3 tap, just put these on. It's almost there. Right, that seems about flush. And to try and stop the turns at a point where you can actually see both of the holes reasonably from the outside. Just move that bit out of the way. That looks okay. Pushing the tar down you should be able to get into the hole and straight through to the other side. The next thing to do is just to remove that piece of plastic shaft and if you've got the tar folded down it's just a case of slicing straight across carefully winding your fingers. Next I'm going to go through with a 4mm drill bit straight as possible and that's going to allow me to put this 4mm aluminium tube in. It's quite a stiff fit but I think that's what you want and as far as the amount of it that you want goes you're going to want to I'll just pull this back you're going to want that to allow the to allow the shaft still to turn freely but to have reduced that gap to virtually nothing. So we now have a wheel with a hub and you can see the amount of excess sticking out of the front there. So using my marker pen I'm just going to go around the shaft there, chop it with a knife This stuff's so useful, I'd always keep bits like that. And then we can see where that comes up against this and just make it ever so slightly loose so that it spins. I'm going to want to chop this piece here which I'm going to do with the Dremel and then put a couple of grub screws just so that they're holding that still they should go in easily now the next thing that I'm going to do is in this bottom bit down here I'm going to drill that out with a 6mm drill bit Just trying to keep it roughly in the same sort of place because you want the centre of the axle to be lined up with this horizontal piece here because that's going to mark the highest point for the suspension. So if I just take this and you can see how that slides in there and the distances in here are fairly even. That's going to give us a reference point for the rest of it 
in terms of what that gives us on the track of the vehicle that's roughly the same as how it started out so if I just take the original one on this side over here I can see that the distance between the tar and the chassis is about the same as what it was in the first place and I'm probably going to want to go slightly narrower than that but we'll see as we go. Next thing to do is actually take this off. Right, so, so we know that that wants to be about there when the suspension is all finally done. Now one of the things that I have thought about is I'm going to want some form of suspension on the front and I'm going to be putting a spring over one of these shafts here in order for me to do that but I'll come to that when I get to that stage. These pieces here on the original Wiley's Jeep I think look like pretty good candidates for holders and taking the top piece first so the black piece it looks to me and I'm just do, and I'm just doing this by eye that if I was to cut roughly in line with the end of this piece here it will be a, about the right distance out so I'm going to go ahead and do that this plastic is a little bit soft but I think I'm probably going to be okay with it the red plastic is definitely harder and more like engineering plastic The reason that I'm worried about that is because the really soft plastics don't tend to glue very well. Okay, so that's that. I've kept everything in a straight line because it's going to give more for any glue that I use to hold on with. And I slide that on there. That's a pretty good fit for the suspension arm. So if I was to glue it just there, we know that it will be in the perfect place. The question really is, is it too risky using this soft plastic? I think that it might be. However, all is not lost because this now gives us a good pattern for what it is that we're trying to achieve and if you remember the piece of plastic in the last video that we cut off the back here this is actually the harder kind of plastic which glues really nicely so I'm going to use a piece of plastic from here and if you see this piece here this sort of L shaped piece there that is what I'm going to use as a bracket using this piece here to tell me what shape it needs to be. So, so I'll start by slicing that out with the saw. There we go. And then taking my piece of plastic which we know is the right size. It's so slippery, I'm glad I'm not using this. I'm going to try and mark out the shape that we're trying to achieve and where we want the hole. So I'll just mark that round there. And the hole that we want, which is going to be a four millimeter hole going to go there so I've marked that as well. 
using a, a tiny 2mm draw bit I'm just going to start it so that when I use the larger draw bit it's not going to move around just go through with the 4mm draw bit that should be the perfect size for this which it is so it's not it's not sloppy but it's not binding either I just carefully carve that round shape so that it all fits inside finishing with a file right, I think that that's reasonably close to the right shape and and all to give us plenty of steering going back to the truck I think that I want to mark out the maximum height that I want for the suspension so I'm going to go in at the top of this slot with the 6mm drill bit so when I push this in I've set my, my maximum height this will all be removed afterwards but I'm just using it as a guide I don't want this piece here to be to be any higher than there because otherwise this is going to fall out and that gives me some idea of how much spring I'm going to be able to put in on the top so what I'll do next is I'll actually get it very straight I'll put a couple of self tapping screws in to hold it eventually I may go over the whole thing with epoxy to make it strong at the end but until I know everything fits I'm not going to make a couple of holes small draw bit that looks to be okay make one hole and put a small screw in there It's only roughly sawed in half because I'm not sure how much that I want to keep. And it's going to be a case of removing some of the plastic here, removing some of the plastic here, really until the two things come together as one. Now I took a short break from doing filming just to work out everything that needs to be trimmed out. And I've actually got this so that the wheel when it's in there has got quite a bit of turning doesn't and doesn't foul anything and I've also sorted out the suspension so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off the other side but this time do it on the camera so that you don't have to see my experimentation because I know that it already works over there the starting point is going to be cutting out the top over here so that I can mount this. I don't feel inclined yet to put in the other top bracket which incidentally ended up having to be the other way up because the screws were fouling on the tyre. I won't do that until I've aligned the top bit. I'm going to start by trimming out this whole area over the top here but actually being careful to leave 
the hole which I've put here because I'm going to want that for the alignment because I know that that puts the tar in the centre. So I'll just trim straight across here and I'm going to be doing it level with this kind of bar here. Right, that's that just about flat. The next thing is to take out this lump over here. I think that possibly doing the suspension in two halves is quite a good way to do it anyway. Now I've sliced across here probably about four millimeters back from this this ridge here just to help me with the alignment so I've made a slice here and I'm just going to take this area out now and across the bottom here you're aiming to almost get it level with the bottom bit. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually join the two halves of the red piece which I took from the Jeep. That tab needs to come off, this tab needs to come off. So this is nice and flat. You'll see why in a moment. This came out of one of the chassis plates for the for the Tamiya tracked vehicle. You could probably use any piece of plastic. This was just handy to me and I thought it would do the job. And this is about 48 millimeters by about 24. The idea being it's going to go up inside here and butt up against these pieces at the end and join with the other one. And so that is a nice tight fit into there, that's a nice tight fit into there and you can see how we've made it slightly wider. I'm just going to tack it with a little bit of glue to make sure that it's coming up on the truck where I want it one there there's the other one so as it turned out this needed to be 45 millimeters not 48 so I'm glad that I just tacked it and what I did was I used what I did was I used these two bits here as my reference point and literally just put the ruler up against that there to see the sort of gap that I had and then over on the other side and I could see that the gaps were the same. And then I'm going to drill into here because I know that that's still underneath there like over here and I'm going to want to hold about there. Just a 2mm drill bit. Now actually this is one and a half, I think. but they're two mil tapping screws that I'm using. When I take this off, I'm going to probably re-glue it a bit. Okay, that's all nice and firm and in place, looking, looking quite flat. So the next thing is to get the upper bracket all mounted. Now when I did the other side, obviously I did it in stages and I had to keep putting the wheel back on and testing it. But having done that, all I need to do is copy that over to the other side here and with a bit of luck it should all work it might need a little bit of fettling afterwards but it should be quite minimum so i'm going to start by doing all of the dremeling where i need to go straight down so 
I'm going to want to do this shape here and this shape here and that is what gives the wheels enough room to turn but I haven't changed very much at all of the profile this way on the outside I think that I had to take a little bit off the front here but I left the yellow here completely intact on the outside although we do go straight in so what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with this bit here at the back and using this partially remaining tab as a reference point I can see that I need to go back about as far as that and the curve comes out quite deep something like that and it does come all the way in virtually to the end of that tab so I'll just do that first and it goes all the way down until you actually get to the floor of the chassis and on the inside here so I'll do that too while I'm doing this we're down to the underside here of the floor of the cabin and right out to the side here but not on the outside so the profile still stays the same and over here you'll notice how the curve virtually goes into this part here what I need to be careful of is to leave enough here to be able to hold the upper suspension link so I'm just going to mark that with a pen to remind me before I take this bit out here so I can see how there's a piece of curve there and kind of goes round like that I just check it across with the ruler that seems about right so I'll go ahead and I'll remove that bit there. And note that I'm leaving that piece largely intact. It looks as if we go slightly over there, but not by very much. So we've taken this round here and I've actually gone all the way up to the floor of the chassis as well. I'll do the other straight down bit at the front here so using my ruler as a rough guide to see what's happening the point at which we're not doing it anymore is there so that is about here and it seems to be taken back about that much. This is obviously something you can go back to and take off more afterwards and always remembering it's always much easier to remove material than it is to put it back. And over on this side here, I don't want to go further than that. And it seems to come around there. So we'll go down to there so that's roughly what I'll be removing okay that seems about even on each side so we've done the sort of top down thing really the next thing to do is to think about coming this way so looking at the side first of all I channeled out quite a bit in order that the axle holder for the steering can move backwards and forwards so I'll do that bit next and having already done this 
you can see that I'm leaving about five centimeters each each side and that goes all the way back to the inside of these things here so that's there and there so I'll just do that this is one that you need to be very careful with because it's where it's getting all its remaining strength from for this I'm using a combination of the Dremel and also the knife where I'm wanting to be more accurate right at this point here I'm just going to test it with the axle putting both axles in for a moment I'm happy with that okay anyway I can always go back and remove a little bit more at a later point if I really feel that it's necessary over here you can see how I've removed virtually the whole of the inside of the wheel arch so that's the part we're going to do next and trimmed it all the way back to the upper suspension link right so as far as I can tell I've got the two sides the same and I've had to go slightly into the floor well of the cab as I did on the other side but you can't really you can't really see it a great deal I suppose I might go over that afterwards with something here it's very thin but I managed to avoid it but on this side here there is a small hole there but I really don't think that's the end of the world and that is basically it for the grinding and removal here I may have to come back and do some extra bits but you only find out these things by actually testing it so the red that needs to go on this side here see where I marked the black line there that all needs to go on the top to make it quite small otherwise the wheel doesn't turn nicely and then at the back here I'll just take that off with a combination of Dremel and knife right that's that all done and actually an awful lot of material has been removed so I may decide that I want to strengthen it up a little bit later perhaps with some epoxy and or fiberglass but let's see how we go right that's both sides in and I think that looks like a reasonable there's even more on this side but actually if it, if it had any suspension it would be less than that um, so that's a reasonable amount of travel I need to put the wheels on to check to see that things aren't rubbing right, so that's both tyres on and I'm not sure what I expected but I've been quite pleased with the fact that this second side has actually worked out without me really having to do any further trimming and so we got this so we got the suspension and similar movement on each side and in terms of how the truck's starting to look I don't think that's too bad right so the next thing that we're going to need to figure out is steering linkages and servo before I take all this off I'm just going to have a quick check to see where a steering wheel would come inside here if it wasn't going to foul on the tire and it looks to me as if it's just before this bit which sticks up so we'll bear that in mind so next thing to do is to take it all off again all right so starting off with a block of wood 
Just going to drill a couple of four mil holes in it. And then I'm going to insert one of these on that side. So that's with the little tab poking downwards. And then I'll just drill out the other one. I'm using the block of wood just to keep everything still and allow me to see where everything is relative to everything else. Now, I'm going to be putting this piece of wire across there and if you remember, we worked out how far along that needed to be and that was inside this tab here. I'm going to need to get rid of most of this piece here and this piece here so I'll just go ahead and do that but I'm going to leave that tab on just to remind me of where it is that we're trying to go so I don't need to get rid of all of it just bring it down Like that I may need to get rid of a little bit more but I want to leave as much strength as I can in this piece and before I chop that bit off there I'm just going to drill a hole well inside of it about there So that should safely miss. If it if it doesn't, I can always bend the wire afterwards. So that's that, and similarly I'll do the other one. I'll see how the rod compares to the hole I just made. It's a fairly tight fit, but it does go through. Just loosen it up a bit. Next. Get my Z-Bender, put the end on. That's much too long. So push that in there. bring it round so that's okay now what I want to do is I want to line them both up so that they're as straight as possible seems to be about right right so having bent the other end and sawn it off because I used quite thick piano wire here that's all ready to go in. Just give that a quick test. And we seem to have reasonable steering. Now, I did bend these arms slightly down, and that was in order that it goes over the top of this part here when it mounts on the truck. Now the next thing to think about is the steering servo. So using a Hobby King 1517-8B, which is a servo that I've used quite a lot of, I actually, I actually bought a whole load of them. 
I've cut out a little bit in the back here and that allows this servo which seems to be moving around a bit that allows the servo to, to be mounted just there so that it's only protruding a small amount from, from the front. Now the other thing which I did was I drilled another small hole in one of the arms behind the first arm and the reason that I did that was so that I can have another control rod going from the servo arm to the steering arm there. This piece here is the piece that resulted from all of that and it's just another piece of thin sort of one and a half mil wire made in exactly the same way as this and using pliers to bend it around until I got it where I wanted it and that I think I had it going this way around push that in there to there and the servo arm has already been centered using the sub trim on the radio and for now I'm just using one of my car radios, a DX4S. I may later go over to the Air 1 depending on how many channels I want. And that sits quite nicely and if I just turn it on... and turn the wheel... that gives us quite a good sweep of steering. Both surfaces cleaned first with the isopropanol alcohol. Just check to see where it's going to go. It's going to go there. That's firmly stuck down. And it's certainly not going anywhere. And then the next thing to do is to try and get this to all fit inside the truck. As it stands, it's bashing on this piece here, and looking by eye, it looks as if I'm going to need to take this whole piece out. It doesn't look as if it's going to massively affect anything. So using my saw, I'm just going to chop it out I'll be back in a moment. Right, that's that gone. Came out very easily. Let's see how the servo sits. It's just touching this piece here. which looks as if I can afford to get rid of. I'll just grind that out with the Dremel. Now that's looking good. Plenty of room in here. Plenty of room in here for the control rods and hopefully they'll all move properly. The next thing really is to put it all together and see if it works. I am going to need to think about the routing of this servo wire so for now I've just punched a small hole in the back here and I've got it coming out there but I don't want it anywhere near the wheels or trailing underneath the chassis there. I might try and come out of the back there if I can make a hole when I get to that stage. So the next thing to do is to put it all in and test it. Right, having tried to do it with the wheels already in the axles, I decided that that's pretty well impossible. So first thing to do, plug in the servo, tuck all the wires away. Actually what I'll do is I'll just pull them through for the time being and I can then I can tuck them back in afterwards if I want to. By the way, I did chop out a small little bit at the back here, which I did between filming sessions. So 
So I just had to chop out a little bit extra here to make room for the steering arm. Let's see if it all goes. Just put these screws in loosely and then taking the steering arm sorry and then taking the steering arm here which this goes into that's that and I think we're just gonna be okay in terms of anything rubbing I'll soon find out so I'll take one of my springs put that on the bottom slot it in and then three of my three of my four mil washers so and we seem to have good clearance and that's looking all right on that side I'll just give it a quick go with the transmitter to see that it's okay. Nothing fouling so far. Next, I'll put this arm in. Put the spring in on the other side. Locate that in there. Put on my three washers. It's that. And again, a quick test. Not forgetting to put on a washer. And then just holding just holding the back of the axle. just pop on that seems okay I do have the option of the grub screws but I'm not going to do that yet but that's both wheels on so I'm just going to need to reduce the right hand throw a little bit you seem to be alright suspensions working okay I think we ought to give it a quick go. I'll just pop some motors in the back and let's see. Just before I do, I want to pick up on a couple of things. First of all, I found that the gear ratio that I was using on the twin Tamiya gearbox was actually much too high and I found that the truck didn't have a great deal of torque. So I've actually put it onto the lower gear ratio and it seems to run a lot better. When you use the other gear ratio, you have the axle coming out you have the axle coming out in a different place so with the higher ratio you can use either of these two holes here at the back and I was using that one with this lower gear ratio you actually have to have the shock come out of the centre the mounting is pretty much exactly the same as it was the first time round and this doesn't hang down to the ground pretty much either even though we're going to be using this top when we finish the model I haven't yet worked out what I'm going to do with those and that's going to be covered in the next video. So for the sake of this video I'm just going to pop the bed on which came from the tractor trailer set. Let's see how it performs.
so I think that in conclusion to this third part I have achieved my goal of keeping the truck looking the same you know, using the same wheels and tyres etc I think that I've probably made it much more difficult for myself than it would have been if I had just chosen some different wheels and tyres but I don't think that that was really the point it's been quite satisfying to overcome the obstacles and I am very pleased with the truck so far looking forward to putting the other bed on the back and doing something with those ramps perhaps anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful you might have some ideas perhaps some ways that I could have done it differently I'd love to hear about that and if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed yet please do and once again until the next time thank you for watching